thank both Kenneth and Lauren have been so helpful in putting all these together. And again, I really appreciate your suffering through the technology and getting this together. I'm going to tell you some stories today. I'm not so much a teacher as a storyteller as we all are. Some of us just tell the same story over and over again, and we don't realize that it's a story. But I'm going to tell some different stories. And it's going to be up to you to decide because some of those stories are going to be true and some of them aren't. And it's going to be your opportunity or task to decide for yourself which of those stories are true. Because my first story is that my work has always been connecting with the totality. I don't know what word to use here. I like the term the Aikikami, the divine spirit of Aikido. I know some people don't like the word divine because it brings back religious stuff and whatnot. Uh, I like it. I hope you can use it. But as we pointed out, the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao. The word is not the, the symbol is not the thing. And we had a quote from an uh, ancient sword master who said that if you hold fast to the words, you won't grasp the meaning. If we don't use words, we float about an empty space and don't attain awareness. So we'll use them the best we can. And I would just say, I've always tried to connect to that divine source. Maybe you like the force. Maybe you like the term inner teacher. I think that's probably the safest point to use. So, the first story I'll tell you is I'm here to connect with my inner teacher. As one of, the, uh, one of our students once said, I come to get all my answers questions. And my work with you has always been in hopes that you'll connect more and more with your inner teacher. And one of my students came and said he couldn't figure out what I was doing at first, and then he realized I wasn't teaching. I was learning out loud. So the other way I describe this is, for those of you who are not Aikido people, when you're studying with an individual teacher, you're called a deshi. That I was always deshi to the Aikikami. That my connection was to the Aikikami and Bob to me was senpai. He was a senior student. And I see myself not as a teacher, just as a student maybe. I've been here longer than some of you and maybe I can be helpful. but never surrender your connection to your inner teacher if i say something to you and your inner teacher your connection to the divine or the aikikami or the totality or the force if i say something and your inner teacher says yeah that sounds right well then your inner teacher says it's right if i say something and your inner teacher goes i don't think so and I like to tell this story. One time I was in a senior teacher's class and I'm sitting there after class listening to him pontificate. And I swear, I look up at the, the picture of O Sensei and I'd swear he was going. I would say never surrender that connection to your inner teacher. Always stay true to that. And if your inner teacher goes, hey, I don't know. Let me think about that. Well, then please think about it. Okay. So I'm gonna go back just once more for the people who came in a little bit late and I asked everyone take a deep breath. So if you want, let's do one more. And exhale, okay. And then I said, if you don't do anything, I think you'll notice you're breathing. Now, which you is it? The you that took the breath? Or is it the you that's breathing when you're not breathing? Or you're not thinking about it? So here we get to have fun with the words. Here we get to have fun with who you are and how you think you are. And so what I wanna say is that the first exercise I'd like you to do is notice that there is breathing going on and if you listen to it, you'll realize that even if you try not to breathe, the you that you know yourself as, there's still an urge to breathe and it'll overtake the you that you think you are or the way you know yourself. And it will force you to breathe. 
And so we find ourselves trying to catch our breath sometimes, or our breath stops, or, and what I want to direct your attention to is listening to the impulse to breathe. And the first exercise is trying to breathe in perfect harmony with that impulse. Feeling how fast it would like you to breathe, how deeply, whether it wants to hold or release or intensify, and to bring your conscious attention into connection with that impulse to breathe. And I call that the extraordinary listening breath, just listening at an extraordinary level to that impulse that breathes you. And that is your communication from the spirit or the divine or the force or the totality. At this point, we had a technical difficulty, the meeting. We had to move to a different meeting. And I came back in here and we were talking about the breathing and the three phases of the breath cycle, the in-breath, the out-breath, and the hold, both at the top and at the bottom. So please join us here. You can hold at the top, you can hold at the bottom. When you hold at the top, it lets the energy circulate. When you hold at the bottom, it stimulates an absorption into the cellular level. So let's do a couple of slow, easy, deep breaths. And I'm gonna ask you, if you breathe in, notice where you feel the breath is going at a cellular level. So we call external breathing the breath going in and out of the lungs. Once it goes into the bloodstream, you may notice that, oh, I can feel it glowing, or I can feel myself oxygenating, you know, in my torso, or I can feel it in the thighs, but not in the shins. So as you start to play with that, and right now, just notice, don't try and get to the places that don't work, or just enjoy whatever you're enjoying. If you notice there are areas that you're not really feeling that glow, just notice it because the system will produce its own intelligence there. So I'm gonna run through a couple thoughts really quickly today. If you come back and join me, we'll try and go into the ones that you would like help with or are most interested in or whatever we wanna come back to in one of the next classes. At the first level of breath, there's just breath going in and out, whether it's through the nose or through the mouth, if you get it fast enough, you can hear it. Everybody clear on that one? Do a breath in through the nose or the mouth. You can hear it, okay? You can hear it. As you start to slow the breath slightly, you can hear it, but it's softer. If you slow it a little bit more, you can't hear it anymore, but you can feel it. Now, is everybody with me? Let me know where everybody can tell the difference between what I call the audible breath and the silent breath. And generally, it's just a matter of slowing it down. Where you can feel it, but you can't hear it. And let me just ask if there's anyone who can't get to the silent breath, take an extra minute because a couple good audible breaths helps you oxygenate, which is the first lesson of yoga and 3Z lessons. Oxygenate, activate, appreciate. So we've been working completely on oxygenation, but we're also dealing with this oxygenation beyond just breathing in and out of the lungs, but also as the oxygen starts to assimilate or absorb into the cells themselves. And then that produces light itself or it oxygenates life itself that's where the process really starts to vitalize your experience that's where you start to feel better the dalai lama said we all have something in common everybody wants to feel better nobody wants to feel worse and then i take that one more notch our friend paul Ehrlich, longtime friend longtime student died about 10 years back he was a drug counselor, alcohol addiction counselor. And he said, we used to tell our patients, you know, if you quit drinking, you'll feel better. 
you know, we'll feel pain better. We'll feel pleasure better. We'll feel better. This sense of paying attention to feeling is so fundamental. And again, it's one of the things that they sort of teach us not to do. Stop laughing. Shut up. Don't feel bad. Oh, don't cry. And allowing ourselves to have this experiential process is not something we're terribly supported in. And so I want to encourage you to listen to your inner teacher. Support yourself in accomplishing your bestowed mission. When you feel your grief, you heal your grief. When you feel your joy, you share your joy. So this sense of connecting in and using the breath is a simple tool. If we go a little further from the audible breath to the silent breath, is everybody with me? And I would say, if you're not, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Let me know if you have a question, because I want to take you to a third level here. But if you've oxygenated enough, you can begin to slow your breath so it's so delicate that you not only don't hear it, you don't feel it. You know you're breathing because you can feel your lungs expand. And actually, you begin to feel the absorption at a cellular level much more intensely. And then I call that the invisible breath. When you can't hear it, it's so soft, you can't even feel it. And it gets a little questionable in there because what I really want to start to invite you to do between now and the next class is play with the borders. Play with the borders where audible becomes silent and silent becomes invisible. I'm just going to take a minute here and let you play with that just for a, a sense of being clear on what it is I'm inviting you to take home as a practice. I'm not going to spend a lot of more time on it right now. All right. So if you're okay, if you're not, Go ahead and unmute your mic and let me know if we're good with this and you think you've got something you can work on between now and whenever you want to stop working on it or the next time we see each other. I'd like to do one more quick breathing exercise and then I want to take us into a little bit of movement. We'll do more movement next week, but I just wanted to introduce this because to me what's important is the breath and this sense of who you really are in relationship to these so we call it two aspects of the you breathing it and it breathing you because the it is really who you really are. And when that manifests, you accomplish your bestowed mission, you naturally become your authentic self. So I'm hearing no questions. I'm hoping we're good to go. We do see one. Uh, what is it? Go ahead, unmute your mic and, and uh, ask it. Hi. Uh, so I feel a little weird, slightly dizzy, not necessarily bad, but a little weird, weird. So I don't know if that's the right way yeah. or not. Say, say a little bit more. Um, I don't know if that's the right direction or not. I would say that when you start to let go of how you know yourself and you start to experience a deeper or more unified or more complete aspect of yourself, then it probably won't feel the same. And certainly when you start oxygenating at a level like this, one of the things that starts to happen is the release of toxins is a little bit greater and it can make you dizzy. Also, you can get the oxygen high and that can make you a little bit dizzy. And I would say, there's no problem with that. If it feels at all uncomfortable, just go back to your normal breathing and let your, your breath take over, as it were, and go back to kind of a shallower, more comfortable, more normal breath. And when you're ready, play with it a little bit. Uh, don't ever push yourself beyond what you feel like you want to play with. Does that work enough? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I... I I don't want to worry about, it's sort of like when we stretch a little bit, it can, it can feel a little awkward here or not so comfortable. 
uh, don't go further than is reasonable to you, but making yourself uncomfortable is how you keep or increase your range of motion. By lifting weights, that's how you strengthen your, your muscles. So we want to play with things that aren't exactly comfortable, but we don't want to be uncomfortable to a point where we're in any way uh, damaging our tissue, where we're in any way scaring ourselves so that we start to resist what's going on. And inevitably, for most of us, when we start breathing, uh, if, especially if you haven't done much of it, both the higher levels of oxygen will, will be a little bit dizzy-ish. And um, especially if you've played with the, you know, all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. And the release of toxins will also produce a kind of dizzying feeling. The other thing I would suggest is that when you do these kinds of exercises, increase your liquid intake. Okay? So I wanna do one more quick thing, then I wanna do a little motion, and then I wanna give you all a chance to talk if you have anything to say. And uh, I wanna go back to, we did the invisible breath, we did the silent breath, we did the audible breath, and there's one more piece I'm gonna call the resistance breath, and that's where you breathe in so fast, and you may not wanna do that at this moment. Uh, you may wanna take it easy if you're starting to feel over-oxygenated. But where you start to breathe in so it's, you can't breathe any more or any faster. And I'm gonna do one through the mouth, and then I'm gonna breathe out just as fast as I can. The channel, when it's open, allows that. If we start to shrink the channel a little bit, then oh, it starts to make sound. And that's literally what we do when we chant or sing. So let me invite you to just start to breathe out with a slightly constricting your throat until you feel it making a little sound. Now, if you've been told to be quiet and not make noise in public, you may feel a little funny doing this, but your mic is muted, so don't worry. And just, ah, ah. And if you tighten it a little more, the pitch will go up, ah. And I think I'll, I'll stay there for a moment and say, if you want to play with that a little bit and you want to come back to me next week, let's talk about that. See what you get in the way of questions and we'll work with it. But because we've gone longer uh, based on the problems we had getting started, I'd like to take you into a little bit of movement, okay? If you're of a mind, I'd invite you to do this standing. If you'd rather, you can do it sitting. So whatever works best for you, I'm going to stand up here. And I may invite you to just lean forward a little bit. And this is a Marin term. Heighten your sensory acuity. Pay attention to your experience is what I'm saying. Feel it at a subtler, more sensitive level. And then come back to your wherever. Where you're not leaning. And the question I have for you, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is how do you know you're there? Very carefully, just a little bit. Don't lose your balance. Don't even get close to losing your balance, but lean back a little bit. So it's distinctly your leaning back. And notice how that feels. And notice what changes. You slowly come forward until you're not leaning. How do you know you're there? What are the experiential signals to you that tell you that you're wherever you want to call this? Okay. Let's do it once more forward. And back to what should we call it? I'll call it normal for a minute. And then once more backward. Just a little bit and then come forward a little bit until you feel like you're not leaning and look for the signals. All right. And now I'd like you to lean forward just the teeniest little bit, just enough so you know, oh, this is forward. And then come back to, should we call it balance? Should we use that word for the moment? And then back. Just the littlest bit. So as soon as you know you're leaning back, stop there and just feel that. And come back to center. 
Okay, and notice what happens. And now I'd like you to come once more, just minutely forward until you can feel that this is no longer balanced. And then you let yourself come back into balance. And notice the difference in feeling. And now minutely back, just the littlest bit until you go, that, that's no longer balanced anymore, that's off balance. Notice how that feels to you, what are the signals that you get? And come back to balance again. Okay? I'm gonna do one more now. I'd like you to get quote unquote balanced. And I'd like you to just get ready to lean forward. Think about leaning forward, but don't move your physical body, but move your, if you will, move your mind forward, but don't move the physical. Keep the physical in balance. And then come back to just unifying the mind and body. And then think about leaning back just a little bit without moving the physical. And then release that being simply present in the moment. And do that again forward, just thinking about it. And what happens when you do that, and what happens when you now release it, and let your mind and body balance or unify or center or align and back just a little bit in thought only, not in the physical, and come back into center. All right, so i just like to say, are we okay with this? Is everybody with me? Can you feel something? And are, can you kind of hold the talk? Because I want to do one quick introduction to some movement, and then I'd like to sit and chat for a few minutes as long as you'd like to stay and do that. If we're okay with that, I'm gonna do this then. Um, we're gonna go into the theater games right now, okay? You're just waking up from sleep, and you're kind of yawning and you know the way you stretch when you do that. Yeah, oh, okay, like that. Okay. Now just keep doing that movement for a minute. Do whatever feels good to you, not too much. And this is the beginning of our Ike dance movement. And now if you could imagine someone's strike coming right through my head and I'm just doing my movement here and we could do an Arimi Nage if we wanted to or move with them in this way, or that way, or this way, or that way, okay? And next week we'll do it with some music or something like that. But I feel like uh, we've run a little past our time, and I did want to get some time to talk with you. I know this is kind of fun. Oh, let's do one more. Minute. Let's do one. Minute. Just let go to, I call this the extraordinary listening movement. How does your body feel like it would, like to stretch or move, or what would be fun? And I, I bring in an imaginary uke from time to time, and and sometimes I'm just dancing. I don't have to worry about martial arts or any of that stuff. But I'm just allowing myself to move because this movement starts to unify the mind and body in a way that. It's very important that the body be part of the game. And I like the freestyle movement, but uh, Michael, who I believe is still with us, has a beautiful tape called Meditation in Motion on YouTube at the Ashland, uh, Aikido of Ashland site. And you can watch it. And he teaches all the Aikido techniques just doing them solo. And I like to play with that. I, I'm more into uh, freestyle movement, so my UKs never attack in classic Aikido form, they're always... Okay, all right, that's as much fun as you get for your nickel today. I think that what's important is that you work on the practices in your own way, on your own timing, at your own speed, and it is a matter of repetition. So take the time that you need Enjoy it, and if you're with us, I'll see you next week. <laughs>